Coming up, the Lunar New Year. We'll take a look at this holiday being celebrated around the world right now, from food to fireworks. And we'll visit the Red Lantern capital of China and tell you why this is the year of the rabbit. Then, basketball dreams. NBA star Chris Paul has a new project just for kids and is sharing some important life lessons that he's learned with our kids correspondent. What do you hope kids learn from this book? I think the biggest thing I, I hope that uh, kids take from this book is believing themselves and also in, in understanding the importance of family. My dad coaches my team. Oh, does he? Yeah, man. So I'm going to tell you, first and foremost, cherish that. Have so much fun with that. And I tell you, uh, growing up, my dad coached all of my teams. Plus, Busy Beaver. Meet Sawyer. She's been practicing building a dam while rehabilitating. But why do beavers build dams? And how do they do it? We'll explain. And mugs of love. One girl from Maryland is on a mission to bring a cup and a smile to some seniors. I hope that other kids can hear and learn that you're never too young to make a difference. And you can always help out in your community. This is NBC Nightly News. Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It is always great to be with you guys. We've got a really good lineup today, including a look at an important topic, news literacy. We're going to talk about what this means and how you guys can use certain tools to help you figure out what is fact from fiction, because as I said on this program before many times, knowledge gives you power. Then a bit later on, we're going to hear from NBA star Chris Paul. He spoke with our kids correspondent Delano. I can't wait for you to hear that conversation. It's really terrific. But first, let's begin with some stories making headlines. It's been another busy week across the country weather-wise with snow, rain, and even some tornadoes breaking out in places like Texas and Louisiana. January has been a very active month for tornadoes with more than 100 tornado reports so far in 2023 across the country. Meantime, fifth grader Ellie Mendez was just sworn in as Connecticut's kid governor. She'll serve a one-year term and says she wants to improve children's mental health in the classroom. I care so much because through my past experiences, I have anxiety. Even till this day now, I still do. And I don't want kids to go through the same way I did. So I really hope that kids can learn how to cope with anxiety. That's a terrific platform. We have a request in for an interview with Kid Governor Ellie Mendez, hoping that comes through very soon. And in the world of sports, American Alpine skier Michaela Schifrin won the World Cup race this week, breaking Lindsey Vonn's previous record. That makes the Olympic gold medalist the world's most decorated female skier ever. Congratulations. Well, this week is National News Literacy Week. And since this is a news program for kids and about kids, we thought it was important to take a few moments to look at news literacy and how you can sort through all the news out there. Joining us now is The Week Junior Editor-in-Chief, Andrea Barbalik. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, as a journalist, this is an important topic near and dear to me, but we're all being flooded with information all day long that we have to sort through. So explain to me what news literacy is. Well, news literacy is really the ability to determine whether a news story is reliable. And as you said, we're getting our news from all kinds of places all the time. You know, television, I'm the editor of a news magazine, newspapers, uh, streaming platforms, social media, YouTube, TikTok, radio. Um, and so news literacy is the ability to analyze what we're seeing, what we're reading, what we're listening to, to determine whether it's factual and credible. Do I, do I believe it and do I trust it? Yeah, I'm always concerned when conversations begin with, hey, did you hear? And then we have to find <laughs> out what we heard and whether it's true or not. So why is this important? Why is news literacy important to kids and all of us? Well, it's such an important life skill. And if you learn how to do this from a young age, you'll always have it for the rest of your life. And it can really help us become better informed consumers of the news, uh, better informed citizens of the world. And it can also help us uh, learn how to form and share our own 
opinions and figure out where we stand on the issues, which is another really important life skill for kids. So give me some, uh, some tips here, some things that kids can do to practice news literacy. So one thing is to really think about what type of article you're reading or what type of segment that you're watching. Um, so a news story gives the, the facts of what happened. And there are also opinion pieces that are really one person's point of view. And both can be great to read. Both can be great to watch. It, it both can be very informative and very interesting. But you really want to know while you're consuming that piece of content, whether it is news or opinion. All right. Well, Andrea Barbalik, it's great to have you on. Thank you for keeping this important topic alive and hopefully spur on some really good conversations. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Meantime, more than one billion people around the world are celebrating the Lunar New Year right now. It's the year of the rabbit. It began on January 22nd, and it got us thinking, just what is this holiday celebration all about? Our friend Janice Mackey Freyer is in China for us with details. It's the biggest, most important holiday of the year in China, the Chinese New Year, when there are fireworks and lion dances, loads of food and red decorations. It's also called the Lunar New Year, and for days after, it's the Spring Festival. The dates change according to the phases of the moon. For 2023, the New Year began on January 22nd. For two weeks, there's no school or online classes. So Kate Liu is at a drama camp, where they're learning about history and cultural traditions around the Chinese New Year. My favorite part is uh, making food for New Year. What's your favorite food? Um, dumpling. Food is super important to the new year, when relatives young and old get together over feasts. Sometimes families make hundreds of dumplings. You have to make sure it's seal well, yeah? And your dumpling is actually made. And guess what? The Lunar New Year isn't just in China. It's celebrated in South Korea, Singapore, Vietnam, and other countries in Asia, and in the U.S. too. Did you know that each year is represented by one of the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac? Like dog, rooster, snake, or dragon. This year, say hello to Year of the Rabbit. How cute is that? And coming off a tiger year in 2022 that felt kind of ferocious at times, a soft, cuddly rabbit year sounds more relaxing. There's always lots of red for the Chinese New Year because red is a lucky color here. People wear red clothes and decorate with red lanterns. Red lanterns has always been a, a you know, very important source of hope. So when you come home, you see a red lantern on your doorway. It always feels very welcoming. Nearly every red lantern in the country has come from one village. It's literally the red lantern capital of China. Most are made by hand, pulling fabric over a wire frame that's sort of shaped like a pumpkin. This one factory is hand making 4,000 lanterns a day. Then they add gold ribbon and Chinese characters like Xi for happiness. Every family in this village is in the lantern business, but only Bai Jun Ping makes big ones. I mean, really big. I'm here for scale. This one is 10 feet. The biggest they make is three times this size. The best part of the Chinese New Year for some kids, the red envelopes given to them called Hong Bao. Money, 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 money. hundred money. It's considered lucky money. At first, you're supposed to refuse it and it becomes a bit of a game and then you take it. And if you want to wish somebody a happy new year, say, Here's hoping your year of the rabbit is a happy one, too. All right, Janice, thanks so much, and Happy New Year. Now to our picture of the week. Meet Sawyer, the beaver, who is being rehabilitated by Dr. Holly Morocco at her home in Mississippi with the help of Woodside Wildlife Rescue. 
Beavers are known for building dams, and Sawyer has been working hard building her very own dam, using everything from Christmas wrap to a Christmas tree to stuffed animals and more. And in case you're wondering why do beavers build dams, well, first of all, a dam is something that blocks or slows down the flow of water in a river or a stream. Beavers build dams for one reason, to keep them safe. And guess what? Beavers are super builders. According to the National Park Service, beavers build dams across streams to create a pond where they can build a home or a beaver lodge to live in. These ponds provide protection from predators in the wild like bears and wolves. A beaver lodge has an underwater entrance. And did you know that beavers are great swimmers? Inside the lodge, beavers have a safe place to hide and do things like sleep and raise their families and keep warm. The ponds that beaver dams create also serve as habitats for other wetland animals like fish and birds. Experts say they usually construct dams from things like trees, branches, and mud, but Sawyer has improvised. Practice makes perfect. Holly hopes Sawyer will one day be able to return to the wild with her two fellow orphan beavers. Thanks to our friends at the Today Show for flagging this adorable video. All right, let's turn to the world of basketball now. NBA star Chris Paul is a guard on the Phoenix Suns. He's also a dad, a husband, and an author. Our kids correspondent you. Delano caught up with Who Chris Paul to talk you? about oh, his new right. project, Just for Kids, inspired by his father and grandfather, sharing some important life lessons for all ages. Thank you for joining me. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. What were you like as a kid? Ooh, it's probably a different answer if you ask me and if you ask my parents. I was active, very active. And I had an older brother. I had an older brother who I fought all the time. And I played football and basketball. I was just a kid that was always into stuff. I was a pretty good student, but I think I used to always get in trouble for talking in class. So my grades would be good, but I would have like unsatisfactory as far as uh, behavior. <laughs> that sounds like my dad. Ah, uh, <laughs> what about you? How are you? Good. In school? Um, pretty good. Oh, okay, pretty good. What's your favorite subject? P.E. <laughs> oh, come on, you sound like my kids. No, we talking math, science, what is it? Math out of both of them. Okay, good, me too, me too. How did you come to love basketball? I think the coolest part for me just now, even in this interview, was to see how you lit up when you talked about your dad, right? And so I see even you smiling now. So for me, um, I was fortunate to grow up in a two-parent household with my mom and my dad. And my dad, he really put the love of basketball into me and my brother. I was a little kid just like you. My dad was in all these different men's leagues and. When I was around like eight years old, my dad would come home from work and he would have a men's league game. Seeing how passionate my dad was about basketball at a young age just naturally gave me that passion, right? So that's how I got introduced to it and I fell in love with it. My dad coaches my team. Oh, does he? Yeah, man, so I'm gonna tell you, first and foremost, cherish that. Have so much fun with that and I'll tell you, uh, growing up, my dad coached all of my teams. My dad was on a football coach, he was a basketball coach. And so now I have a son. I have a son that's 13 and I have a daughter that's 10. And the hardest thing for me now in playing in the NBA is that I don't get a chance to be their coach. So cherish those times with your dad. As much as I love playing in the NBA, I would love nothing more than to be able to coach my kids like my parents did. Can you tell us about um, your new book for kids? Yes. So my new book is a story of, of me and my grandfather, and it just talks about our relationship. It talks about how, you know, when I was growing up, he just taught me how to work. So my grandfather had the first black owned service station in North Carolina. So when I was your age, when I was eight during the summer, I used to work at my granddad's service station. And so my grandfather taught me about hard work. So throughout the book, it just talks about these different challenges you know, these different things about going to play basketball games or going to tryouts and doing all these different things and being with my brother and being with my family. And uh, 
I think that's what got me so excited about being able to do this book and, and show you guys that dreams do come true. What do you hope kids learn from this book? I think the biggest thing I, I hope that uh, kids take from this book is believing themselves and also in, in understanding the importance of family. If you look at the, the pictures of the book, right, you'll see these different things that I'm going through where I'm working at the service station, and then you'll see me working. Like, I think a lot of times when you see NBA players, everyone think you just woke up one day and you magically could do these things, right? But it takes a lot of hard work and discipline. And so throughout the book, you'll see me dribbling. You know, I'm just dribbling down the street, down the street. I've always had a ball in my hand. So then when I got into the games, you could see my family was there. They were supporting me. And uh, I think that's the coolest part of the book is to, to see the ending where you see me and all the family together. And um, there's nothing like it. Do you ever get pregame jitters? Do I ever get pregame jitters? Do you play sports? Yeah. You play basketball, right? Yeah. Do you ever get nervous before your games? Yeah, a lot. A lot? So guess what? I do too. And guess what? I always say this is that the day that I don't, that'll be the time that I need to retire. I've been playing basketball now since I was four years old, right? I'm 37, be 38 in May. And before every game, I'm so nervous. But it's not like a nervous, like I'm scared or anything like that. It's an excitement because I feel so fortunate and grateful to be able to play this game. So absolutely. I'm so nervous. And then they throw the ball up, and then it's like, let's get to it. What advice would you give my team? Ooh, great question. What advice would I give your team? I think the biggest advice I would give your team, especially at your age, is first and foremost, make sure you're having fun. Work hard. And then the only way to get better at something is you really got to put the time and effort in. And then the other thing is when you're on a team, you got to have each other's back. You got any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I've got a sister. You got a sister? Younger or older? Um, younger. Okay, okay, perfect. Because my son is older and my daughter's younger. Either way, it didn't matter. But if somebody talk about your sister, what you gonna do? You got her back, right? Yeah. Right? Same thing with your teammates. It's a different type of connection when you're out there playing in a team game and you can look over and you know that your teammate has your back and your teammate knows you had a back. When you miss time being injured, how do you help your team? Whew. Man, you got some really good questions over there. That's actually the hardest time for me is when I when I miss time. It's so hard for me because some people like to play basketball. I need to play, like to keep my sanity. Like I love to play basketball that much that when I'm not playing, I almost go crazy. And so the way that I help my team when I'm not playing is just being on the bench and being supportive and letting the guys know what I see from the bench, but also letting them be themselves. Why the number three? Man, so the number three, me, my brother, and my dad, we all have the same initials. My dad is CP1, right? My brother's CP2, which makes me CP3. Ah. Uh... Right, which is funny. So then when me and my brother had kids, I had my kids first, and so, like little Chris for a long time wore number four. And then my daughter on her basketball team, she's got number five, right? Yeah. CP four or five, you just keep going. Who inspires you? Who inspires me? Oh man, I got great questions. Obviously my kids, my wife and everything, but the, the first person that always pops into my head is my dad. My dad is like my end all be all. You know, and so for me, being 37 years old, there's gonna come a point in time in your life too where you feel like you're grown. You know, you're probably gonna be about 13 and you're gonna start talking back and be like, I'm grown, I'm grown. Well, I'm 37 and I still want my dad's approval. I got kids of my own, got my own family, but my dad is still like my hero. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have that, then you, from the looks of it, you you on the right track. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem, Dale. Appreciate you, man. Hey, Chris. It's it's Dale's dad. Chris. Oh man, what's happening? Hey, dude. Thank you. This man, is amazing. I didn't know that. 
I didn't know what y'all, I'm dead serious. I gotta, I gotta tell my wife. <laughs> Delano, that was a terrific interview. I love what he said about fathers, especially your dad and our friend Craig. So thank you for bringing that to us. Finally, in our inspiring kids series, an 11 year old is on a mission to fill the hearts of seniors. Our friend Kristen Dahlgren has the story. Thank you so much to everyone in our community. It's a project made with love. I hope that other kids can hear and learn that you're never too young to make a difference and you can always help out in your community. With the help of her mom, 11-year-old Carolyn started Mugs of Love last year in Montgomery County, Maryland. The idea? A simple one. Fill mugs with different goodies for senior citizens. So first you're going to take your mug and where are you going to put it first? Hot chocolate. We really wanted to find a way to help out Meals on Wheels, but obviously we can't drive. So uh, we found the Mugs of Love project to be a really easy way to, for kids to like participate. So it really shows that kids of all ages, this is a really good service project to get them involved in their community. It's really important to them to have their kids participate in their community and do service projects. The service project brought the community together last week for an assembly drive on the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, a day of service across the country. We had a great turnout for MLK Day. So many people came. We had like over 60 volunteers. It was really great. We made like over 500 mugs. Thanks to donations, Mugs of Love has been a success. So this year was so amazing to see how the community really came out and gave us mugs and things to put in them. And people from all over um, the country saw our Amazon wish list and were sending us things like, she has some over here, like trail mix, hot cocoa, tea, anything like that, um, really that would fit in a mug is really good and would brighten up a senior's day. Actually, because of all the donations from our community, we were able to exceed our goal of 500 with over 800 mugs. So it's amazing. We're very grateful. Carolyn and her siblings love giving back. Uh, it feels like you're really making a difference from a young age. Um, uh, so that's why I love the Mug of Love project, is because um, uh, so all ages can help and participate. We have been overwhelmed with how much generosity uh, we have seen and experienced during this project. We had schools, two schools donated, a church donated, local businesses, Penzi Spices. We just had so much support and we're just so grateful. Kids making a difference and filling the hearts of seniors one mug at a time. You can start your own Mugs of Love project in your community. And you can just collect a mug, fill it up with tea, hot chocolate, and donate it to a local homeless shelter, the senior center, really anything. And because you're never too young to make a difference and you don't have to wait till you're an adult to start learning about your democracy and learning that you can participate too. Kristen, thank you very much. And before we say so long, we want to introduce you to Nightly Kids Pet of the Week. Say hello to Nala and Simba Melik. Nala is a Wheaton Terrier and Simba is a Golden Doodle. Their parents say they are best buds who love playing with the family. And parents, if your kids want their pet to be featured in Pet of the Week, or if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. By the way, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC, so check your local listing for the time it airs in your area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.